Good afternoon. We are going to be talking about membership sites. Just disregard me for like, no, don't disregard what I'm saying. Disregard what I'm doing because it's not really relevant. Oh, hey, hey, you know what? Forget about this. We're going to be talking about membership sites. And um, this is something that I've been exploring a lot recently and having some success with it. And I'm, I'm always excited to talk about membership sites. Um, I'm, I'm just curious, is there anyone in here that is currently running a membership site? Raise a hand. Okay, we have one person, two people, three, four, okay. Uh, let's start with paid, yes. All right, running a free membership site? You are running a free membership site? Okay, sweet, sweet, sweet. How many people thinking about starting a membership site? Go ahead and raise your hand. Oh, sweet. You guys are in the right place. I think that's what we're going to be talking about today. All right, so I want to make sure that this is as actionable as possible. So I want to let you know what we're going to cover today. First, we're going to talk about the pros and cons. Yes, there are some pros and there are some cons, and we're going to talk about those. Then we're going to go into what goes into planning to, to, to create and launch a successful membership site. We're gonna actually talk about the process of building a membership site, and then we're gonna talk about something that is very tricky when it comes to um, membership sites, but how to promote it, and lastly, how to retain your members. The longer your members stay around, the better. That should seem pretty obvious. So we're gonna talk about these five things. So if we've accomplished this by the end of today's session, I will feel uh, like this was a successful se session. But before we get into this, some of you may not know who I am, so I want to talk a little bit about who I am. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I have two main blogs. One is called Become a Blogger. That is self-explanatory in terms of what I teach, uh, hopefully. Um, and the other is Interactive Biology. That is a biology blog that I started when I was teaching at a high school, but I always wanted to be a university professor. But I didn't have a PhD, so I started this biology blog where I could teach the stuff that I would be teaching if I were a biology professor. I don't need a PhD. I teach what I want to teach, right? So I started that blog, and fortunately, that, did, that landed me a job as a university professor. Now, um, this is a job that I eventually left. I did it for three years, and I, and I realized that I was just going and going and going. I was running my online business. I was doing this professor thing. I, I had absolutely no time for my family, and that was a problem for me. That was a significant problem for me. And if you know anything about me and my family, I love me, my family. This is my son, Noah, our son, Noah, that was born in 2012. And our daughter uh, that was born just this year, she's going to be five months tomorrow. But I realized that I had no time for my family. And my wife and I made a very difficult decision. I was the only one working outside the home at that point in time. And we decided that I would leave my job. Now, this isn't FinCon, the financial um, blog. So I can tell you guys this. I didn't have a financial plan. The blog wasn't where it needed to be. I, I know you guys are looking at me like, I don't know if I want to listen to this guy anymore. But it wasn't where I needed it to be in order to support my family as yet. But we felt as if that this is the direction we had to go for a number of reasons. And we felt led that this was right for our family. So I'm not endorsing this for anyone. Don't do what Leslie did. Don't go home and say, honey, I have a plan. I'm leaving my job and we're going to. Anyhow, so I left my job. And I remember the day after I left my job, Rent was due, and I, had, I didn't have the money for rent. I know it's kind of crazy. Um, so I had, to, I had to put a plan into place. I needed to start really making some money. I had made money before with my blog, and I knew how to do it. I just needed time to make it happen. So fortunately, just, just to wrap that part of the story up, I, I miscalculated when my last paycheck would be. So Monday was the first. And Friday, a paycheck was deposited in my account. I was like, yes, I could pay rent. So I paid rent and then moved on in life. Um, so 
one of the things that I knew that I always wanted to do, but I didn't have the time to do, was start a membership site. And I knew that that would be, it could be a good thing because you have that recurring monthly income. And <laughs> evidently, when you leave your job, the bills are still recurring. They still come. <laughs> Rent, and I guess so, right? Um, so I decided to start a membership site. And the membership that I, start, site that I started was called the Become a Blogger Coaching Club. Um, I started that one membership site, and I also work with Social Media Examiner. I was there, um, uh, uh, what was I? The senior manager, I was trying to remember, senior manager for their membership site, which was called the Social Media Marketing Society. And between these two sites and working with a few clients, I've learned a lot about what it takes to plan out a membership site, to build it, to market it, and then to retain your members. And that's what we're going to be talking about uh, today. So we're going to start with the pros and cons because I want you to know the truth about membership sites. Let's go with the pros. I like pros because they are positive. Uh, so number one, you get to provide consistent value for your members. Uh, of course, you're doing that with your blog, or you may be doing that with your blog, but this is at a different level. You have people that are paying you on a monthly basis, and your job is to show up with some kind of value. And that's a great thing. So yes, you're doing great for your members. Number two, you're building a strong community of loyal, not subscribers, but customers. And there's something that's different between subscribers and customers. Uh, number three, you know, like those recurring bills, this is recurring revenue that we are uh, talking about. People are paying on a monthly basis or an annual or quarterly, depending on how you set it up. Um, but these are the pros of, oh, and then there, and as a result of that, that makes your income more predictable. All right, so these are some of the benefits. These are some of the pros of running a membership site. But yes, there are some cons, so let's talk about it. What was the first pro? Consistent value. Well, the first con is consistent value. <laughs> They're paying for consistent value, and you got to continue to show up consistently. That's a pro, but it, if you really think about it, that's also a challenge. All right, how do you make sure that you are providing that value on a consistent basis? Retention, that is a huge issue. Um, how do you keep people coming back? How do you keep them subscribed? Um, and that is a big challenge that most membership sites struggle with. Customer service can be a headache, especially as your membership site grows. Uh, and people are paying, and maybe they have issues with their credit card, maybe they don't understand how to access the site, maybe you created the best tutorials in the world to show them how to do the most basic things, but they didn't watch those tutorials, or maybe they did, and I'll just leave it at that. Customer service can be a headache. All right, so those are the, pro the cons, okay? We have pros and we have cons. Now, let's talk about planning because you've evaluated the pros and cons and you're still in this room and you're thinking, okay, this might still be something that I am interested in doing. Let's start planning. Before you start building, there are four questions that you always need to ask. Now, this goes for whether you are creating just a, a one-off digital product or a building a membership site or uh, trying to decide what kind of content you're going to create. You're gonna, these are questions that you've heard over and over. And question number one is, who is your ideal customer? You have to know who this ideal customer is in order to provide them with the value that they are looking for. So the more detailed you can get about who this, this ideal customer is, the better. All right? I know this is 101, but don't worry, we're going to get there. And this is fundamental to what you're going to be building as you build your membership site. So once you know who your ideal customer is, get as detailed as possible. You also want to know what struggles will they encounter? 
what struggles will they encounter as they are trying to reach whatever goal it is you're trying to help them reach with this membership site? And you want to think about it in stages. What are some of the first struggles they're going to encounter? And once they've passed those struggles, what's next? What are they going to encounter in the future? What value will you provide? There are all kinds of things that you can create to, to, to be a part of this membership site. What value will you be providing to that ideal customer? In other words, what problem are you solving? All right, so that's question number three. And question number four, you understand who they are, you understand what they're struggling with, you understand what problem you are helping them solve, but then how will you be providing that value? You have all kinds of options. You can do um, courses, you can do webinars, coaching calls, you could have a Facebook group for support and for in, uh, to, to build that community and so on. It could be ebooks, it could be PDF downloads. You have so many options at your disposal. I highly recommend for you to go through these four questions and answer them in as much detail as possible. Okay? Now, how do you answer these questions? There are a few ways that you can do it, but the two main things. Number one, uh, if, you, if, if, you, if you've been blogging for a while, you understand who the, the, your, your ideal customer is, you can just kind of have a brainstorming session, right? You take a blank sheet of paper or a blank uh, Evernote file, or whatever the case might be, and just start jotting down some ideas. This is one way that you can do it. The second way that you can do it is you can conduct a survey. I think that this, not I think, this is a much better option because now you're not just going with what you think, you're going with what they are telling you, what they are telling you that they are struggling with. And of course, there's a lot that goes into creating a survey. Um, when I create surveys, there's a process that I go through where I think about my ideal customer and I think about what I'm trying to sell them. And then I come up with a list of assumptions. I might assume that this person is a very busy person. This person um, doesn't have a lot of time to invest in studying the material. Or I might say this person would prefer to get this content in video format. Or this person, whatever the case might be. You create these lists, this list of assumptions about that person per, as it pertains to ultimately what you are trying to sell them. Then, based on that list of assumptions, you'd create questions that will test those assumptions, and that, that those are the questions that go into the survey. All right, so you can brainstorm, you can conduct a survey, or you know, if you don't have an audience to conduct a survey with, you could just walk up to, the, if, if you go to an event where your ideal customer is gonna be, uh, you can start talking to them, you can start asking them questions. All right, all of this to get your answers to those four questions. So that's the planning phase. We've planned out, we understand who our customer is, we understand what they're struggling with, what they're trying to accomplish, how we're gonna provide them with that value, and now it's time to build that membership site. Now, in terms of building a membership site, you actually have two options. Well, you have many more than two options, but I'll talk about two options. Option number one, you can go with an all-in-one platform, okay? An all-in-one platform is, generally speaking, gonna be easier to use, all right? It's gonna, ha you, you, you're gonna lose some of the control and flexibility, but if you're not a very technical person and you don't have a technical person working with you, this may be a good option, and I'll talk about um, at least one of those. Um, and then you have a do-it-yourself approach. This is going to be a little more complex. It's going to be a little more involved, but you have more control and more flexibility. Okay? So I'm, I'm just curious. Who, who sees himself in the first category where I don't necessarily want to deal with all the technology? It scares me a little bit. Okay, I'm seeing more hands there. And who sees themselves in the, oh, I want to be hands-on and get into the nitty-gritty and, and nobody. Wow. Oh, one, one, two, three. All right, we got a few of those. That's, what I, that's kind of what I would expect. All right, so when it comes to all-in-one platforms, the one that I recommend is Thinkific. 
Now, there are a number of platforms out there, like Teachable is another one that does um, similar stuff to this. I prefer Thinkific over Teachable because you get paid directly with Thinkific. With Teachable, you have to wait, I think, 60 days, and then you get that payment. In my mind, that's a bit of an inconvenience. You're selling it now, give me my money now, right? Um, uh, Thinkific has also been around for a while. There are some other platforms. We were just talking about Kajabi, for example. That's another one where it makes it relatively easy for you to set up the membership site, but there are some limitations. And we were talking about some of those limitations in terms of the types of payments that you can, uh, um, payment structures that you can set up. Um, but generally speaking, these platforms are going to be easy to work with. Many of them are going to look similar from one course to the next, and you know that's one of the compromises you make. You can, comp uh, you can customize it to a certain extent, but you have the same basic structure. Um, and then the do-it-yourself model. This is the way, this is the way I choose to do it. Um, and I'm going to work, walk you through the technology that I use uh, so that you can be aware of what I use and how I use it. Number one, WordPress. WordPress because WordPress is a great content management system, and I love it, and I'm very comfortable with that. Um, in terms of the membership aspect, I use Amember Pro. Amember Pro is a membership software that you can install on your server that will protect whatever. All right, so it can protect your WordPress site. It can protect anything else that you build. It can protect a directory. It can protect specific files. But then you can integrate that with whatever content management system you're using. Uh, some of the additional tools that I use, I use Stripe for payment. Uh, I used to use Stripe and PayPal, but <laughs> I'm not a fan of PayPal because I've run into so many technical issues with it that I figure I just simplify the process. You see, I like simplifying things too. It's not just you guys that want um, an all-in-one solution. Um, I find Stripe much easier to work with. Uh, GetResponse is what I use for email communication. I'm not saying you should, but it's what I use. You could use whatever you're, you, you're, you're comfortable with. Um, I use SendGrid. Now, SendGrid is a system that handles transactional emails. So this is not for like my autoresponders with GetResponse or anything of that sort, but a member itself will generate specific types of emails. For example, your invoices, or uh, if you've lost your password, the system is generating emails. Now, I don't like emails to be handled by my server because my server may not be optimized for delivery. SendGrid, if you handle your emails um, via SendGrid or AWS, there are a number of different ones that you can use, that will actually increase the deliverability. It's not essential, but it's something that I um, find value in. And I've never paid for it. Uh, you pay for it after a certain number of emails, but it's, th that number is so high that I've never had a need to pay for it. Facebook groups, I use that for community engagement. You're all, you're all familiar with Facebook groups. I've tried forums, and I've tried Facebook groups. Forums in 2016, not that they're obsolete, but it's very difficult to get anyone to engage because they have to come out of what they're, usually, uh, what they're used to doing and come into your system. And that's a tall order. It's possible, and there are people that still do it successfully, but you will, get, you will notice that you'll get much higher engagement with Facebook groups as opposed to forums. Um, I use Vimeo Pro for video hosting. Um, it's relatively affordable, and what I like about Vimeo as opposed to some of some of the others is that you can specify that this can only be embedded on my domain. And if someone tries to steal the embed code and add it to their site, it just won't work. All right, so it's, and there's a lot of custom, um, customizability in that. Uh, you can use a service like Wistia uh, of, as well, but that can get pretty pricey. Vimeo is what I use. Um, and then some additional plugins that I use, the Event On plugin is a really nice uh, plugin that allows you to create a schedule so that they can see when you have events coming up like coaching calls or webinars or whatever the case might be. I really like the way that this displays it in the members area. Um, uh, Swift Type, 
this is actually wrong. This, it doesn't create a member checklist, um, but uh, these, are, these are reversed. So Swift Type creates a customizable search engine. Now I'll tell you what this does. When I do a coaching call, I create a video, I, I record the video of the coaching call, and I record every question separately. And I put it as a post inside my members area. Now what Swift Type will do is, if someone starts to type Facebook, it will type up, it, it will show them, it will pop up all of the questions that have ever been asked related to Facebook, and they can just click on that and go to my video answer to that specific question. So now that's become a massive resource because I've been doing this for two years. If you have a question, most likely it's been asked already, and you can start typing that question out and go directly to my answer to that question. So it's very convenient. Uh, front end checklist, uh, that creates a member checklist. One of the things that I do as a part of my membership is I have, a, a, I call it the ultimate bloggers checklist that tells them all of the different things that they need to do and they can go through and check off what they've done and that will be stored in their membership so that they can go back and see, okay, I still need to do this, this, and that. So the front end um, checklist, that's a free plugin as well um, that you can get access to that allows you to create those. All right, so those are the tools that I use. Now, um, then it's time to create the resources. Now for your member, resources, you're going to create the core training. Now, I, I consider the core training the thing that helps them accomplish the goal that you say you're going to help them accomplish. So in my case, if that is, uh, I'm going to help you build a blogging business, I'm going to have some core training that covers everything that you need to know to build your blogging business. All right, but then you can also have core resources, and these are gonna be useful things that will help them as they go and um, um, uh, accomplish the specific goal. So whether that is resources that you recommend or bonuses that you're including, whatever the case might be, you create those resources. So you create, you create your core training, you create the core resources, you have that in the members area so that when they sign up, they can get access to it. We making sense so far? All right, sweet, I'm seeing a lot of nods. That is a good thing. Now, uh, how do you promote your membership site? There are a number of ways that you can do it. First thing I recommend for you to do is to either create, create your membership site on a separate domain or have a domain redirect. Why is that? Well, it's a little easier to remember than if I say, okay, go to becomeablogger.com and then click on the courses section and then go over here, yada, 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 or becomeablogger.com slash join my course, blah, blah, blah. You can just create a domain redirect or have it on a separate domain if you want to go in that um, direction. Um, for example, mine is bloggercoaching.com. If you go to bloggercoaching.com, it's going to redirect to becomeablogger.com slash join. And whenever I do things where I'm promoting it, it's really easy for me to say, go to bloggercoaching.com. So having that domain or that domain redirect is a very good idea for pro, uh, promotion. So all of your promotions can then go via that specific domain. But then you gotta sell it. You can't just have, unfortunately, if you build it, I wish, the internet work that way. If you build it, they will come. <laughs> that would be so, it would make my job, my job so much easier. Um, you want to create a sales funnel. Now, Kim was talking about a funnel earlier on today. It's a similar concept where you have a bunch of people coming in at the top. You're exposing them to specific types of content um, that with the purpose of ultimately turning them into a customer. So, one of the ways you can do this is by having your lead magnet. You create that free lead magnet, but the key is that it is relevant to the person that is trying to accomplish the goal that your membership site is helping them to accomplish. It makes perfect sense. I will not be sending a, a how to cook lead magnet. Um, as much as I like cooking, uh, that probably won't make sales for my membership site. 
Uh, and then you have your follow-up sequence that sells them on autopilot. Autopilot is a good feature. I like it. Uh, and you can have also a free or low price trial. This is something that I started testing out over the last two months and it seems to be doing uh, pretty well because they can get in for a certain period of time at a lower price or free. In my case, I am testing out free to see how that works and it is working pretty well. This is what mine's, mine look, looks like. When they join, or actually, let's start up here, I do a number of things. I have my podcast episodes that go out on a weekly basis. I do interviews on other people's podcasts. I have my blog posts or other people that might write about me on different blogs. I do webinars. That's a huge deal for me. Webinars convert very well for me. Or you can have affiliates. I don't do affiliates currently, but that's the next um, stage that I'm going to be going into. And all of that goes to bloggercoaching.com. And when they go to blogger coaching, they can sign up for that free trial, and then they go through this email sequence. And this is how I do it. The cost of my membership site is $47 a month. But if you go through the free trial, while you're on the free trial, you have the option to upgrade. And if you upgrade during that free trial, you get it for $27 a month. So is that, there is that time sensitivity. There's that sense of urgency. There is, not, there is the, if you don't sign up now, you can still become a member, but it's going to cost you $20 more a month. All right, so that's one option. That's the option that I'm doing right now, where they get a series of eight emails over the course of 30 days, and in every email, the way I do it, in every email, they are provided with a lot of value, but then at the end, I remind them, hey, just so you know, uh, if you do want to continue your membership, you can do so using any of these links, and if you do that during the course of your free trial, you will get it at the discounted rate. So that time-sensitive offer is a very um, significant thing in, the, in how I've built it into my funnel, and I promote either a monthly or an annual membership. They have both options. Now, the average retention on a membership site, depending on who you talk to, is about two to three months, which is pretty bad. Um, but it's the average from what I've seen from a number of different sources. Uh, so that means if you can convince someone to join the annual membership, you've increased your retention significantly in one shot. So having that annual option is a very good idea. Don't just do the monthly Give them that option to upgrade, to, 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 to sign up with an annual membership because you know you will have them for at least a year. Or the chances are high that you will have them for at least one year. Member retention. Yes, question. Um, your special offer. Yes. Um, when you're trying to get someone to become an annual member, do you get an additional? Uh, I have a discount for that as well. Okay, so the discount applies to monthly or annual, and if you sign up during the 30-day trial, you get a discount. I don't remember exactly what the discount is for the annual, but yes, they do have that option. Uh, but yeah, actually, if you have questions as I'm going through, feel free to throw them out there. If you start asking too many questions, I'll, I'll stop it, but you, you get the point. All right, uh, let's see. The onboarding process. This is going to be very critical for member retention. The longer you can keep a member, the more money you make. All right? People are going to be much more likely to stay if they have a good experience in that first month. So your goal is to give them a great experience in that, an awesome experience in that first month, all right? And if you can do that, if you can over deliver on the value in that first month, they're gonna stay around for significantly uh, more time. And that's where the onboarding process comes into play. You wanna get them to take action immediately, all right? If they join your membership site, they join and then they go away 
and they you know, have to deal with family and work and all this kind of stuff before they do anything on your site, their chances of coming back drops dramatically. So if you can get them to take little baby steps as soon as they sign up, you're going to increase the chances that they're going to have a good experience during that first month. And if you can do that, you're going to increase the length of time that they will stay with you as a subscribed member. So I'll tell you what my onboarding process looks like. When you sign up, you go to a page that I call my getting started page that has a series of four videos. And the, my main goal is to get them to take little baby steps that will hopefully hook them in. We did a, um, we did a, survey, we did, we did a survey with Social Media Examiner to see which members were finding the most value from the membership. And I don't remember exactly what the numbers were, but if, they, if we got them to log in at least once during that first week, the chances of them saying that, that this is a great program went up significantly. All right? And I th I th that part was it went up by 80%. Um, so it, it, it's very significant to get them to really take action immediately. Um, so what I have them do, step number one, I tell them to go over and join the Facebook group and introduce themselves. Why do I do that? Just because I want to know who they are? I mean, yeah, I want to know who they are. But also, when they introduce themselves, what's going to happen? Other members are going to chime in. Hey, welcome to the coaching club. I'll jump in there and say, welcome to the coaching club. So glad that you're here. They share a little bit about what they're dealing with, and other people start giving them input. All of a sudden, they feel what? Oh, I'm a part of a community. This is not just a membership site where it's hands off. And what, how does that make them feel? Warm, fuzzy feelings on the inside. People love those warm, fuzzy feelings on the inside. All right, so I have them join the Facebook group and introduce themselves. I ask them a very specific question. They answer that question, and the other members know that this is a warm and welcome environment. They're going to jump right in and start to engage with them. Um, then I ask them to whitelist my emails. Why? Because I want them to get my emails. It makes perfect sense. So I show them a quick video showing them how to do it, and they go ahead and they do that. Then I actually have them sign up for SMS notifications. I use a service called Call Loop, and um, I, uh, uh, this is, it's not a service that I use very well, but the idea is whenever we have a coaching call or something of that sort, they get a text message, and they can click on it and join in on the coaching, uh, coaching call right there. That makes it easier for them. All right, easier for them to engage. They don't have to go back to their emails. The open rates on SMS are pretty close to 100%. So you know you're going to get more, a higher chance of uh, getting to them. Um, the significance of that screenshot with me like that is there's no significance there. It's just a random <laughs> screenshot. And then I ask them to explore the members area to actually look around and see what's going on. Now, if they've introduced themselves, if they received a warm welcome and maybe even some advice already in the beginning, they're going to be more likely to follow through and do all of these other things. So this onboarding process is such a crucial thing. How can you get them to take very little steps immediately and experience some kind of warm, fuzzy feeling? Fuzzies are good. Yes? Is there an uh, it depends on, um, it depends on the, the number of people that you have subscribed. I think it's free for up to a certain number of uh, subscribers, and then I think it starts at like $10 a month or something of that sort. Okay? All right. Uh, so you get them to take Im um, action immediately, but then you want to front load that first month with a lot of value. Now, when I say that, some people are going to say, all right, sweet. So I'm going to give them all my e-books. I'm going to give them this. What do they feel? Overwhelmed. You don't want to overwhelm them because if they feel overwhelmed, they're going to run away. And we don't like customers who run away from us. We want them to run towards us. So you want to provide something extra during the first month. But here's the key. That extra should help them simplify as opposed to overwhelm them. Now, I'll show you how I do this. 
Um, when I first started the membership um, site, you know, I, I had all these courses in there. Well, eventually I had all these courses in there, and it was a lot of great content. And the thing that I kept hearing from people over and over is, man, this is so much, I don't know where to start. I took that as a sign. Maybe I should show them where to start. So I created a four-week jumpstart. And in the four-week jumpstart, I break down all of the, not all of the content, but the, some of the, the core courses that I had in there, and I categorize them in what they're going to be doing during the first week, the second week, third week, and fourth week. And I made it very simple for them. Um, not in terms of uh, it's not work for them, but at least now they have some very detailed guidance during that first month. And of course, they get those weekly emails letting them know, hey, this is where we are, on, we are in the process, and this, these are the tasks that I need you to do. All right? So I'm providing extra value, but the extra value is actually simplifying it for them because then they're going to be more likely to find the value that's actually there. All right, uh, then let's talk about communication. Communication is going to be essential to your success. It's going to be essential to uh, mem member retention. It's a very important part of the process because it helps you to nurture the relationship. Um, it helps you to, you can use it, uh, use email to communicate regularly. All right, what do I mean by that? You can do weekly updates, okay? And those weekly updates, you can let them know what, what is happening in the membership. So in my case, uh, every other week we have coaching calls. Once a month we have a webinar. Um, uh, every week we have kind of a post in the, in the Facebook group where we set our goals and that kind of, those kinds of things. So every week I'm communicating with them, letting them know what's going on um, inside the membership. Let them know what's coming up and highlight. This is huge. Highlight and congratulate member successes. If you have a member that's doing an awesome job at whatever it is you're teaching them how to do, jump on that. Highlight them. Make them feel like a superstar. Not just for that person, but by doing that, you're letting the other members know, hey, this is possible you can have this kind of success as well. And that's going to be inspiring and motivating them to actually take action. All right? Um, event reminders. So any events that may be coming up, you can let them know about that as well. Let's talk about some of the other things that can be done for uh, member retention. Engaging your members. Obviously, this is going to be huge. Once again, you're providing them with consistent value. You've got to keep them engaged. And the more engaged they are, the more value they're going to get from it. And the more value they get from it, the more likely they are, going to, st they are to stay ar around for a longer uh, period of time. And this might seem obvious. But to engage others, you have to be engaged. And you have to be engaging. All right? So the more that you can do to show them that I am here, or the more that your team can do to show them that your team is there, um, the more they're going to be engaged. You want to check in on a regular basis. Here's an example of what I do inside my coaching club um, once a week. Once a week, we uh, set our goals. So I ask them, what were your goals for the last week, and did you accomplish them? And then I ask them, what are your goals for this week? And this was the day that I posted this, um, and people started sharing their goals um, and what, what their goals for the previous week were and whether they accomplished them or not and what their goals are for the next few week, the, the next week. Uh, you want to ask questions that are relevant to what they're dealing with. Okay? Questions about maybe what they're struggling with or how you can help them or applying certain principles that you teach in your courses, in your membership. Uh, you want to get your members involved in the process as much as possible. So uh, posting weekly goals, a daily writing challenge. Um, in August, we did this thing where instead of doing weekly goals every day, we say, what is the one thing we're going to accomplish today? And I, ha I, I made the first post, and then the rest of the members can chime in. This is the one thing I want to do today. And the accountability is huge. 
they feel so much value in that. Um, mastermind groups, that's another way that if you can get your members connected to each other, oh man, they're gonna love you. 